I'm Matt. I'm Lauren. We, we are, are YAH, YAH Adventures. Adventures. There's the bridge, you cross the bridge. There's a beautiful set of steps that go up into the city. I'll tell you all a little story about why this town is so special to me. Okay kids, we're about eight, nine kilometers away from Potomarin. Now Potomarin is gonna be very special to me because um, this book that I'm finishing up that's very personal I ended it in Puerto Marin. In my book, two old friends meet on this bridge at the end. One of them knows who the other is. The other has no idea that he's talking to an old friend. Actually, in the book, here is where they meet, here on the steps. And uh, I picked this, this town at random when I wrote about it, looked up pictures online, and now I'm here. You can see those are old Roman remains. Actually, as the valley started to flood and became this river, they took a lot of buildings stone by stone and moved them up there and they still stand today like the original church. This is kind of a, a very special place. Now I'm here. First day into the uh, Camino. All the pictures online show pilgrims crowding around here. I came late and I walked in the rain so I get to enjoy this view alone. What a view it is. This was, this was a thick mist three years ago. You've got to see the mist that's come over the valley here. Look at that stuff. Going down to the stairs, I'll show you from the top of the stairs. Look at that. Look at that mist. Wow. A thick mist has moved in from the channel. All right, we go that way. I'm on the steps. These are old Roman steps up into Puerto Marin, which is on the hillside behind me. My question is, do you think places become sacred because God imbues a sacredness into, to the, into them? Or they become sacred because we imbue a sense of sacredness into them? Or is it both? Are we divinely inspired to give that thing something sacred? For instance, on the Camino de Santiago, Santiago being St. James. St. James uh, relics or remains allegedly are in the church in Santiago. The story of St. James, he of course was the fourth apostle called by Jesus. There's a story that he came to Spain to preach, then he went back to Nazareth, I think. Anyway, he went back and he was, Herod had him beheaded. Then his relics inevitably were moved by the apostles to Spain and placed here when the King Alfonso II, I think, found his relics. That's the story. It's mythos, and we say mythos not in, a, not in to mean it doesn't exist or it's not real, but everything that's a story that defines us as a culture is mythic in some way. Yeah, Tom Brady is now a mythic figure, so if I say Jesus is a mythic figure, that doesn't mean he didn't exist. It just means we have created a mythology or a mythos around him. Mythology, again, does not mean false or fake or made up. It means this is how we have imbued that story with certain power. So here's the deal. Three years ago, I walked the Camino starting from Saria. And just before I started that Camino, my cat Milo died. And this cat was one of the best creatures I know, better than a lot of people. It was heartbreaking and I wanted to honor him. And I wrote this story where he, at the end, after he dies, he gets to come back as a person and he decides to go to the Camino to meet me, to say goodbye, but in a human form. See if I get through this without crying. So I wrote that story, 
as I was riding, I said, where am I going to have this meeting take place? I had not been on the Camino yet. Pulled out a map, boom, Porta Marin, which is where I am now. And I saw these big, beautiful Roman steps, this bridge that comes across, and these big, beautiful Roman steps. I said, the Roman steps are a perfect place to have this scene happen. I wrote it. I have a Photoshop that's on my Facebook page of of the back of Milo. I had a photo of Milo and I have the back of him so it looks like he's sitting on this top step waiting for me to come across the bridge. Last night I came and I took a photo and I said to my wife, I said, I could guess where I am? She goes, you're with Milo. And I realized I have made this a sacred spot. This is a sacred spot for me. Nobody else feels that same sacredness that I do. And last night I went to bed. I got up in the middle of the night to call my class reunion and then I went back to bed and Milo came to me all night after that for the last four hours. Constant dreams. So is he here <laughs> even though he's never been here or physically he was never here or is that me projecting my own mythology on this place? Either way, it was an emotional night of dreaming. There's a little bit more to the story. I made a lot of stupid mistakes that first day on the Camino in 2018. For starters, I got the train from Madrid at 10 p.m. at night and it didn't get into Saria till just before 6 a.m. I didn't sleep on the train, so I started out on the Camino with probably no sleep for the past 24 hours. I pressed on to Puerto Marin when I probably should have stopped at Margate or even sooner. And when I arrived in Puerto Marin, I realized that I didn't have all the gear I needed. Then I met my first Camino Angel, Joe. Joe gave me earplugs, a flashlight, protein bars, all the things I should have had, and he gave me some good advice. It became clear that I didn't know what I was doing. Turns out Joe is from my home state and lives about two hours away, so we've remained friends ever since. So no, Milo didn't turn into a person and show up on the steps of Porta Marin but he did send someone to look after me. And I met somebody who lives in Fort Myers, Florida, very close to me. What are the odds? It's crazy. <laughs> 